War Games. It's a broad genre for video games. It's also a great movie from 1983 that you should watch. But anyway, we're talking about 15 war games to pay attention to in 2020. Now keep in mind, we're not talking about medieval warfare. We're talking more modern, because we did that in a previous video. Anyway, let's get started off with number 15 and talk about Days of War. This is a fast-paced World War II first-person shooter that released in January. It's competitive and seemingly pretty chaotic, with a bunch of classes, 12 maps, and 60 weapons. You can get into up to 32-player multiplayer matches here, or, or play with bots, which we always appreciate. Also appreciated, though, is the gore. Like, despite a pretty straightforward look, there's a lot of dismemberment and exploding heads, which is you know, honestly, entertaining. The game definitely feels smaller scale and independent, and the community is kind of mixed on it right now, but seeing as it is multiplayer focused, we expect it to get stronger over time at least. Anyway, moving on over to number 14, we have Broken Lines. This one is quite interesting. It's alternate history World War II, and it's story focused. It's centered around eight soldiers who get stranded behind enemy lines. This one is honestly quite a nice surprise, really. Like, it's got tactical turn-based strategy RPG gameplay, but the intense story focus leaves you helping these soldiers deal with the horrors of war. The decisions are extremely important here, in battle and outside of it, thanks to the story-driven gameplay. This is a PC gamer's game for sure, especially if you love tactical RPGs or something like XCOM, but you want a little bit more direct story impact with it, maybe look into Broken Lines. Now at number 13, we have Blood Force, which is not a marijuana game. Yes, but we're still on PC World War II games. This one, though, is a VR game. It was slated for 2019, but as of right now, it hasn't seen a release. Still, though, I mean, the gameplay and the trailers we've seen are absolutely insane. It's centered around two storylines. Now, in, in one, you're a spy, and in the other, you're a soldier. It has both arcade and challenge modes, and the main loops are centered around puzzle solving and story stuff with the spy, and then just with the soldier, straight up wartime shooting stuff. I, and I mean, come on, like I said, like you see this footage here, it looks really awesome, and if they can get the graphics that good, this could be a, a kick-ass VR game. Not much else to really say about it other than that we're really excited for this one, and it's definitely on our VR radar. But over to number 12, we have Comanche. This is a THQ Nordic joint that revives the classic PC game series about attack helicopters. I love that THQ Nordic kind of just exists to revive old franchises that people really love. I appreciate that they just keep doing this. But with Comanche, this new one focuses around objective-based multiplayer combat scenarios. It's team-based competitive with fast-paced dogfights in absolutely massive-looking landscape maps, and thankfully, there's gonna be single-player content for us old-school folks as well. It's dropping sometime in 2020, and it is an early access game. There's an open multiplayer beta dropping soon, too, if you're watching this video close to its publish date, so that's something to keep an eye on if you're just looking for something to try out, but, uh, yeah. Now over at number 11, we have Panzer Corps 2. Hey, man. It's cool that you like helicopters, but if you like tanks, we got this right here. This is World War II vehicular warfare where the gameplay is turn-based, so you're sort of serving as a general. It's easy to get into, but difficult and highly strategic to master, it seems. Uh, this is one of those hardcore, like, your dad-style World War II games that has a massive amount of content. It's gonna start with 60 different single-player scenarios along with extra bonus ones and 10 multiplayer design scenarios. You can also randomly generate a map uh, with a few different mission types to mess around with online or cooperative play for all the modes as well. It also looks very pretty with time of day and weather effects and just a massive, massive variety of units. You can finally get your hands on this one March 19th, 2020. But over at number 10, Starship Troopers Terran Command. Hell yeah, baby, we're getting a new Starship Troopers game. It's an RTS game, and believe it or not, it's not the first Starship Troopers game. There was Terran Ascendancy for the PC in 2000 that, honestly, not a lot of people remember. But what I like about this one, judging from the statements made by the team, the developers, and the debut trailer itself, the game is going for some of that Paul Verhoeven movie inspiration, you know, from the television broadcast style to the campy, goofy voiceover and design of a lot of the units. I'm excited. Bug Warfare is the best warfare, as far as I'm concerned. I, I just love Starship Troopers, and I'm happy it's getting a game, even if it doesn't turn out that great. Just some sort of, like, licensed property Starship Troopers thing. I want more of that. 
I'll take whatever I can get, man. But coming down to number nine, we have Medal of Honor Above and Beyond. As you guys probably know, EA does own Respawn. And as you probably know that despite, you know, a lot of people grumbling about EA, uh, Respawn has been kicking ass making games like Titanfall and most recently Jedi Fallen Order. And one of their next projects is actually a VR game. And it's a game under the Medal of Honor banner, which we haven't seen in quite some time. And thankfully, uh, the last reboot they've kind of uh, stopped pursuing. This goes back to its roots with World War II action, but it's completely in VR. We've seen a lot of things like throwing objects in the environment, tossing grenades, some first person obviously shooting with a bunch of realistic looking weapons. And honestly, this looks like it could be straight up good fun. Uh, it's Respawn's first VR endeavor, but we're hoping that maybe they just have some good ideas and they're gonna try and make things unique here. And also, I think it is worth pointing out that EA, despite like how cynical we can be about them and what they do, I mean, at least they're throwing their money towards a VR game. For VR fans like us, that we're happy to see that. Still, again, I just wanted to point out, I'm very happy that I'm, I'm glad Medal of Honor is kind of going back to its roots here. But next at number eight, we have Land of War, The Beginning. This PC game, man, this one has the potential for some really good stuff. You play as a soldier in World War II venturing across Poland, you know, from the cities to the more rural areas, the battlefields, of course. Now, it's said by the developers to be a modern shooter, but with a classic feel. There's a heavy emphasis on story here, with the developers passionately focusing on the very start of the war in Poland in 1939. There's stealth, uh, there's lots of first person shooting with tons of weapons and vehicle sections. Now, I still think gameplay wise, this one does look a little rough around the edges, but we gotta give credit to them for exploring a World War II story that hasn't been overdone in other movies and TVs and games. Now, uh, Land of War is expected in 2020, but we don't have a clear announced release date yet, so yeah. But over at number seven, of course, we've covered tank games, we've also covered attack helicopter games, so we gotta talk about Airplane Games, Project Wingman. Now, I just wanted to point out different alphas have been available, but the game trailers have been advertising full game coming soon in 2020. It is an aerial dogfighting game through and through, built in Unreal Engine 4, so it looks pretty gorgeous. There's a story mode, which weirdly enough has a, a real world fantasy fiction that kind of feels like Ace Combat, plus conquest mode. There's a lot to work through here, and the game has full VR support, something that for this type of game is really, really impressive. I, I can't stress that enough. The full version of Project Wingman is dropping sometime this year. Now down to number six, we have Wasteland 3. This one is a reach, but we wanted to highlight it because Wasteland is awesome, and it doesn't get enough love from modern gamers. This is basically the classic PC game that gave us Fallout. Wasteland is a great strategic RPG series, once again set in a post-apocalyptic world. So like, yeah, you're not fighting a war per se, but you are fighting a war to survive? That's for sure, at least. This time around, the adventure moves to snowy Colorado mountains, where you can set up a new base of operations and train new survivors. Uh, Squad-based tactical combat returns with rangers you can customize and, and, and build with different perks and abilities, and of course, there's tons and tons of story with plenty of freedom in decision making and exploration. Just what you would expect from a good PC RPG. Uh, there's plenty in the package as you can play solo or cooperatively, which for these style RPGs always works out really nicely. Honestly, we got high hopes for this one. So keep your eye on it. It's dropping May 18th, 2020. Now over at number five, of course we gotta mention it. There's likely an unannounced 2020 Call of Duty game. Now, I mean, you know it's bound to happen. Every year we get a Call of Duty game because the money machine has to keep on turning. So what's it gonna be this year? Uh, last year, Modern Warfare was very interesting. It broke some molds. Uh, you know, everybody feels differently about the multiplayer games in every single entry, of course, but the single player campaign was awesome and the new engine is great. Are we gonna have Call of Duty Black Ops 5 in 2020? I don't know, but we know we're gonna be playing Call of Duty something, so we had to mention it here. Next at number four, Crossfire X. It's a first person shooter set within a massive global conflict between two private military companies. Uh, we're getting an Xbox version of the game, possibly in this year, 2020. After an exciting reveal trailer last year, a lot of new people were exposed to this game franchise that's been around since like 2008 in China. So yeah, yeah, it's a Tencent game from Smilegate Entertainment, but it's had legs for a long time. And Microsoft decided to bring the PC multiplayer shooter to other territories in this new revamped version of the game. 
It's gonna have a single player campaign as well. Interestingly enough, co-developed by Remedy Entertainment, the guys most recently behind Control, and before that, Quantum Break and Alan Wake. It's another one of those insanely massive games from an Asian market. It made like $1.5 billion last year, and barely anyone else really knows about it. And I hope by them bringing the game here, we at the very least get to see why the hell it's loved so much in other countries, because Crossfire X looks really pretty and fast paced and fun, and we can't wait to get our hands on it. But down to number three, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Quarantine. Hopefully this actually gets released in 2020 with Ubisoft kind of playing things very carefully with the release dates right now. It, it might not squeak in this year, uh, but the setup is three highly trained operators from the Rainbow Six universe working together to fight off a sort of technological parasite. Essentially, it was inspired by Rainbow Six Siege's outbreak event, which people really seem to enjoy. So this was a logical spinoff. Uh, we're including it pretty high on the list just because frankly, Rainbow Six Siege has exploded into an absolutely awesome and entertaining game, and we haven't given it enough respect. Uh, we're hoping quarantine can really spin some of that magic into a weird, new, fun thing to play with friends. Now down to number two, another thing that caught our eye recently is Outriders. This is from People Can Fly, the folks behind uh, one of my favorite creative shooters, Bulletstorm. Interestingly enough though, Outriders is a third person shooter, maybe slightly Gears of War inspired, but definitely something different, especially with the main hook. It's extremely sci-fi with elements of colonizing an alien planet, and there's a superstorm that gives both the colonists and the native planet people basically superpowers straight up, and then they fight each other. You're fighting in this conflict with cool looking characters and guns uh, shooting and superpower blasting your way through via one to three player drop in, drop out co-op gameplay. Really, I still think at first glance it might seem a little generic, but people can fly, can get really creative with their shooters in the gameplay department, and I think that's worth paying attention to. This is gonna be dropping for PC and the current consoles, as well as next generation consoles later in the year, so uh, yeah, that's definitely something to think about. But down to number one, of course, you guessed it, Halo Infinite, a Halo game that's gonna be launching both on Xbox and PC. is something we're very excited about, and it's a new science fiction war game. Details are still very slight on Halo Infinite, but they have spoken very much on the record that they are going back to their roots. You can tell from just the look of the trailers, the design of Master Chief himself. There looks to be open environments. This is running on a completely new engine. We really have our fingers crossed for this one. We have high hopes, because Halo 4 and 5 were kind of like short-term fun, long term, eh, didn't really stick in our minds, so to speak, as much as the classic games. So we kind of want that classic feel back. We really hope Halo Infinite can knock it out of the park because I think the world needs a good Halo game right now, even if maybe you're not an Xbox gamer. Thankfully, the franchise has been coming over to PC. That is very good. Who are we going to be warring against this time? Will it be the Covenant again? Will it be one of those Halo 4 or 5 factions? I don't know, man. But thankfully, we'll probably find out holiday season 2020. Those are some war games that we thought were worth highlighting, uh, but we also wanted to point out a bonus game, Death Stranding, which is releasing on PC this year. Uh, there are definitely war sequences in it, so maybe it counts? I don't know, we're just messing around. Anyway, we wanna hear what games you guys are looking forward to playing this year that involve any sort of uh, warfare, combat, any type of stuff like that. Let's talk. And if you learned about a new game or two, and now you got something else on your radar, clicking the like button is the best way you can help us out, show your appreciation. We'd really, really be grateful for that. But of course, clicking the subscribe button is also a good idea because we put out videos every single day. Either way, as always though, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.